Welcome to the Music Production Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Funk. You're hearing music right now made with the Super Awesome Sounds Ableton Live Pack. This is a collection of instruments made with samples of the Casio SA20 synthesizer. This sort of old school toy keyboard has got some really cool sounds in it. Um, Each note of each patch was sampled and built into these really cool Ableton Live racks. There's also 30 or so audio effect racks you can use on any kind of music you want. You can check this pack out by going to my site, brianfunk.com. If you are a member of the Music Production Club, you get this right now as part of your membership during the month of April 2020. You can pick it up at the store or you can get a free version of just five sounds so you can get a taste of what this is all about. So check out Super Awesome Sounds, brianfunk.com. On today's show, I'd say this is a long time coming. I finally have gotten the chance to talk to Darren Cowley from Isotonic Studios. Uh, Darren is, uh, man, you've been doing this um, as long as I can remember searching for things for Ableton Live related stuff. And I I think maybe even before Max for Live was a thing. um, Yeah. With like templates and stuff. A decade at least. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So, yeah. Yeah. I think it's going to be a cool conversation and I'm happy to talk to you, Darren. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's, uh, I've always looked in the, the diary and gone, right, when, when's going to work out with your time zone, my yeah. time zone. And, and, uh, at least, uh, at least we've <laughs> linked that together now that neither of us are actually going into work at the moment. So yeah, some yeah, good, yeah it's uh, like 10 in the morning here. Normally I'd be in school teaching and then by yeah. the time I get out, it's kind of late for you. So, um, yeah, three o'clock in the afternoon here, so uh, I'm already uh, I'm already drinking. It is Good Friday, so it's yes. uh, yeah, it's a celebration. It's a public holiday, so yeah. Well, I think um, it's uh, it's good to maintain that stuff and and keep a sense of uh, uh, enjoying of life right now, as yeah, it can be easy to get caught up in a in the whirlwind of news and panic and stress. Yeah, um, it's very real, and um, it, it's you gotta you gotta pay close attention to your mental health these days. <laughs> Absolutely, I mean we we have the the news on the TV when we wake up, mm-hmm. and then half an hour of that, and that's just to get updates, and then after that, no, it, it doesn't go back on because yeah. it it's just that constant movement of news. Right. It, yeah, the mental health is is obviously really important, and actually keeping that headspace and not not overemphasizing your own situation uh, mm-hmm. i'm healthy my family's healthy it's Good. like yeah thank heaven for for those blessings and you know there's lots of people that are a lot lot worse off than us mm-hmm. um you know yeah it's yeah. pretty scary times but you know we i'm trying to make the best of them got my family around me so uh, i'm blessed in that way yeah yeah i feel very thankful and even uh a lot of everyday things are are kind of that we take for granted so often uh, you know i try to remind myself hey at least we still have this hey at least this is still going this is still working um yeah because you can imagine um if this you know any if anything else were to kind of uh fall apart or break down then this this gets much more challenging too yeah i I think what what's really come to light over the the last few weeks um certainly for me is how technology is connecting people yeah. more than ever um i i will text my dad and he will come back in capital letters <laughs> still to this day but actually because you don't see people now as often that mm-hmm. phone call the facetime everything else like that stuff that you wouldn't have normally done because you're so reliant on seeing people yeah it's been brilliant it really has and my wife's been doing stuff with her work she's she was still working up until last friday and now she's uh, she's cleaning everything mm-hmm. every day <laughs> every single day cleaning everything right. and uh yeah, she's now taken a relax out out in the back garden. So, okay. <laughs> thankfully, no hoovers during this interview. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah, I I know it's been a good chance to catch up on some things too for me, and um, and cleaning. Um, I could probably do a better job at that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, good. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad she's also I'll, I'll leave it to the experts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
But um, yeah, so like like you said, it is a great time to connect, and I, I've noticed you've been really on top of that. Um, maybe um, before, like I want to talk about like your experiencing doing you doing some uh, the live DJing that you're doing and uh, all of that. But um, maybe like in case anyone doesn't know about you about Isotonic, um, if, if you want to give us the uh, rundown, it'd be kind of cool to hear it from you anyway. For me, yeah, no worries. Um, I I started DJing about twelve, mm-hmm. like on a, a borrowed turntable and a tape deck and uh i i always wanted to be that disc jockey not a dj a disc jockey the kind of guy that you saw at like the uh, wedding or um local radio etc and that was kind of like i love the music but i love the personality side of of the disc jockey uh, kind of thing and uh, I got a book out of the school library called how to be a mobile disc jockey and I kept that for four years and then you know, I had to hand it back on the last day <laughs> um, but it was hitting 16 and music started to turn it electronic to a degree and uh, around me in my area we had uh, quite a large uh, traveling rave sound system we had spiral tribe we had Exodus, pretty much like a mile from where i i live putting on parties for up to twenty five thousand people in a warehouse every single weekend so wow. i'm going out hearing these tunes on a saturday night and on a monday i'm, I'm banging the door on um, my local record sh- shop street sounds going i heard this weekend i heard that i want this i want that and literally every penny from whatever jobs I could find to do that would pay money were going on black crack on on vinyl. (laughs) And I got myself a pair of belt drive um, turntables, sound lab DLP ones and a realistic mixer, which was out of Tandy. I think you guys have it as radio shack in the U S yeah. Um, So no bass control, no EQ on that at all. It, It was literally two faders and I started to record tapes and my mixing then was play a record, wait until a break, press play on the other one. And they kind of clashed for about a minute until one stopped. But because I was buying the records and other people weren't because they didn't have uh, the inclination to do so, but they wanted to listen to them. I started to do the, the tape to tape dubbing. Hmm. So I'd buy a, a pack of TDK C90s and I'd do a mixtape on a, on a metal tape, you know, cause got to keep the quality there. Right. And then <laughs> I would, I would repeat that, put a pack of 20 in the shop. They would sell, I would buy more records. I would record a new mix. I put a pack, buy, nice. sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. And it was like, I could see there was a business to this. And hmm. so I then started to play in local pubs and clubs and I did that for give away my age now, sort of 20 plus years. Um, and at the end of it, I, I got to the point where I was, you know, traveling three hours to do an hour set in a, in a nightclub in Leeds that none of my mates really wanted to come with me. Yeah. And it was great. And I'm good, but it was a very lonely life and uh, you know, I'm, I'm married to a very beautiful, beautiful woman uh, inside and out. And uh, there was absolutely zero point spending time away from her and uh, the rest of the family. So I kind of hung up my headphones metaphorically and uh, thought back to those first days of creating the tapes and thought, you know what, I I could do with putting a mix together again. What technology is there now? Because I'd, I'd move from uh, turntables into CDJs, uh, and then I went back to turntables with Serato, mm-hmm. and I wanted to make perfect DJ mixes, put on CDs and give them away to my mates, etc. And I saw an advert in Sound on Sound for Ableton, and it was Ableton Live Five. <laughs> And it just struck that I wouldn't need to stand there for 45 minutes mixing tunes together and mess up the last mix on like minute 41 to make me tear my hair out. I want to do it all again. I could just bring like my 
files that were in Serato into Ableton and perfectly phrase them and layer them up over each other. And I, I had a, a Dell sort of tower PC that was my day jobs and I put Ableton on it and I used the trial for a bit and oh, I really loved this. And I, I recorded the first mix that I did out to audacity or something like that. So because I was in the trial version, you couldn't save anything. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I, I, I played it to my mate and he, he went, Oh, that's brilliant. Really? Oh, perfect. How did you do that? I like, oh, it's Ableton live. Like, oh, how's that work? Oh, yeah, I like the look of that. Why don't we go halves on the license? I was like, mm. yes. Mm. And uh, shout out to my mate, Neil, uh, Neil Quigley, who's uh, now recording under the moniker Quest, Q-E-S-S. -S. Um, he originally warmed up for me, much more talented DJ than myself. He was uh, keying, you know, putting the key of records on the sleeves before oh, yeah. I'd even heard of like yeah. Camelot and mixing key, et cetera. <laughs> and he went on to play for Renaissance and stuff like that all around the world. But he's the reason I managed to get Ableton live in the first place. Mm -hmm. And it was just, wow, look what I can do now. Oh, these CDs are getting a bit of traction. People are asking me to play again. Well, I can pick and choose. Um, but I can't turn up and play Serato now that they've booked me on the Ableton Live kind of setup. And that's when I, uh, I saw the APC 40 and uh, I have gas, you know, gear acquisition yeah, syndrome. Yeah. Luckily not synths, but DJ gear and controllers. Yeah, <laughs> I'm all over that. So I got the APC 40 and it was like, ah, oh, this makes sense now. I've got my DJ faders. I can trigger my clips. I've got acapellas running over stuff that that's just an instrumental. I was loving it. And uh, it was kind of reawakening that desire to go out and perform and DJ for people. So I did a couple of gigs with that straight out the box APC 40 setup. And on the third gig, I remember it quite well. Um, the guy in front of me, the one before played about nine of the tunes that I'd prepared in my live set. Oh, no. Now I wasn't using arrangement mode. I was yeah. using session mode, but it was like, it was all configured. I, I have no, zero backup plan there is nothing i can do but uh -huh. realistically play those same songs again and hopefully play them in a different way but it was at that point that i thought this doesn't work for me in comparison to like <coughs> for me carrying 10 record boxes from a car into a venue so that i had a selection of music yeah. and now it's down onto a usb but it's all prepared so i Started with the APC40 and Bohm's software, you know, the MIDI um, converter the translator, uh, yeah. software. That's mm -hmm. the thing. And that, <coughs> pardon me, that really started to um, inspire me to what else can I do to make this on the fly, spontaneous. And uh, with all its conditional values and stuff, you could press a button, it would create a gate that would allow another button to do a different message. And I, I just, you know, I got obsessed with that controller. Um, did a video, put that up on YouTube, and that's probably still the most watched video. It's obviously the, the oldest on there. And it was that video that got seen um, by uh, a guy at Novation, who's then now moved on to Ableton. And uh, he sent me a launch pad and said, can you do some stuff with this? So I created a template for the APC 40, a template for the launch pad. And then Max for Life came out. And uh, that's, I think that's 10 years and a few months now, because it was the anniversary sort of back end of last year, I think. Mm -hmm. And I was on the beta for that and actually being able to get into what you can't MIDI map in Ableton Live was just like, boom, mind blown. Uh, suddenly I, I was able to forget about focusing on a clip to set the loop markers on and off. I could just press a button. So I realistically set about trying to recreate the stuff that I had in Serato. Um, no disrespect to Tractor, I just 
fell in love with Serato in the first place. And I wanted all of those bits, the on the fly looping, the slicing, etc. So I made a couple of devices, put them up on maxforlive.com, um, which was proper in the early days. And one of them was called Isotonic, which was the device and the template for the APC 40. And it was purely named that because I have very limited creativity when it comes to naming things. And uh, I literally still play old school 88 to 92 hardcore. And I was looking through my pile of records and the one at the front was Isotonic Everywhere I Go um, mm -hmm. by a guy called Chris Paul. Um, who is now a customer, so it's kind of gone full oh, wow. circle. But I, I blatantly nicked uh, the the name. And if you look up isotonic, it means balance and mixing. And it kind of went, oh, yeah, that makes complete sense, man. Yeah. I don't smoke, but if, if I did, then it would have been a, a proper classic moment at that stage. I had a couple of other devices named after other hardcore things, but that one stuck. And it picked up downloads, and then I released a new version. And because at that time, the website maxforlive.com counted every download, whether it was one person doing it once or then repeatedly doing it, I released a new update for that every other week for about six months. So everyone who downloaded it first would then download it again and okay. then more people would and then 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 and so it became for a period of time the most downloaded device on maxalive.com and that was like oh, wow mm. i'm i'm just sitting here in like my lounge effectively tapping away making some visual code in max and and like 15,000 people have downloaded it but there was no feedback just the comments and the comments generally like, this doesn't work for me <laughs> what doesn't work how doesn't it work give us some feedback and <laughs> i was like all right okay the whole business came about because that apc40 template was picked up and used by a guy called ten snake for his live show and he out of the blue sent me uh, some money via paypal uh, to say thank you for creating it because he was out in Ibiza and using the the template etc oh, nice. and I used that to build a website mm. that that was it I thought ah, if I'm giving it away I might as well have it on my own website and maybe charge for a premium one mm. so I did and that went okay but each new product uh, if you know how long it does take to create just anything yeah at the time I mean, I was looking up to you putting out, wow, you, was it about one a week, a new pack you were putting out for free? That was how I started. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Kind I mean, of like the, you, you, I you were the, you were the guys, uh, you, Tom Cosm, uh, the covert operators mm. in the Ableton live world. Yeah. You were the guys that I was looking up to and going, oh my God, that content, wicked, your website on point. And it was just constant. I'd literally only just finished playing with one of your packs. The new one would come out. And I'm like, where does this guy find the time to do it? And I realized at that point that I couldn't. I Like you, we obviously both got day jobs, family. And I thought, there's only one way this is going to go. I'm either going to do this for a bit and let it die, or... I speak to the people that I've been talking to for ages on email and on Facebook, on Messenger and stuff, and say, why don't we do something together? Mm. And Duncan, or Ned Rush, as he's mm. better known, um, was at the point where he was getting annoyed doing his website, keeping up to date with videos and everything else like that. And I persuaded him. He was very easy to persuade, to be fair. Um, <laughs> time and place i think uh, i was like why don't i take your devices put them on my website you don't have to worry about yours and you can concentrate on continuing doing the videos that i mean he, he's awesome uh, the the personality etc and uh, it was like yeah okay that works uh, okay so he has a release and then i have a release and then he has a release and i have and there started to be a consistency to the content that was coming out and that started things rolling mm. i then 
message Mark Towers. Uh, he's a Ableton certified trainer up in Leicester, um, who's just now stopped working because he was having to go in uh, and support the key workers' children. He's like like you in education, mm. and uh, he put out Pong. Have you seen the the push Pong? Thing? I was just, oh yeah! Wow, that's that's really cool. I mean, I can't make any great noises with it, but it, as a concept, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. We had a phone call and he, uh, yeah, I've got uh, like asteroids and I've got one based on pinball. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. I want those. I want those. And then for a period, I just went crazy and like, <laughs> I've seen a Max for Life device that you put out. Is, have you got any others? And the collective grew hmm. and grew and grew and grew and grew. And now it's around about 40 of us in that group, including yourself, yeah. which uh, was a, a great honor to have your, your packs in, in the store as well as the Isotonic Sound Store. And the content wise, we could release something every other week. We choose not to, because we don't want to be one of the, the big brand people sticking a, an email to everybody every single week with a brand new sale of this, etc. We'd rather wait and, and slow things down and you know, let each product breathe because each of the developers themselves, um, like JJ Bird, who um, has done the Factor Synth, that was probably two years in the making. So to release it on a Friday and then release a new product on the Monday straight after it, yeah. it just doesn't, it wasn't the way I wanted to run a business that was as a collective of developers. And that's really at the heart of everything that, that we've done as isotonic. I say we, it is, it's just me. Um, but the collective is the, the 40 odd developers that are there. Hmm. Oh, that's cool, man. Um, because you were, uh, you were one of the guys I was looking up to, you know, like, oh, the stuff going on over here is really cool. You know, it just, it's, it's funny how it all sort of like, inspires and your story about um do you say quests uh, um yeah my mate neil uh oh, maybe it was uh someone else I, I didn't catch the name but the dj that was using and essentially the donation um so that uh what i love about that is like here you are putting something out and then someone contributes helps you out and now you're able to take that and build yeah. even more and it's just that's a great story of just the power of helping other artists and yeah, people. It, it, yeah. A bit, the guy was 10 snake. Uh, his uh, Ten snake. massive hit was coma cat and it, it just hit at that point. And when he got in touch with his real name, I hadn't got a clue who he was uh -huh. to be fair. Uh, you know, Google. Oh really? Oh wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, that was the switch yeah. for me that when you can do the free stuff, but this could also be a sideline. It could be a business uh, that, that could help support you and the family. And uh, at the moment, I'm wondering whether it might be the full time because uh, I'm out of work for foreseeable, but I'm sure everything will come back and it will come back with a bang. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, well, it's, it's uh, great. And I'm grateful too, you know, to have something else to work on and something else to use and to put out and to even bring in a little bit of money is super yeah. important um and i know a lot of people are trying to figure that out now and how how to adjust at least for yeah, the absolutely. near future um but uh yeah like your, your work has been great and it's i love that it be, had it grew into this sort of community where it's um all kinds of products and uh, people and styles and designs like yeah and there's like kind of like people you can almost follow within it like um like Mark Towers stuff is is some of my favorite stuff. Um, coming from a, a a childhood filled with video games myself, and um, my love of the push, and I mean to play with those sequencers, uh, yeah. like like you said, like asteroids and the Arkanoid one. Uh, That's I mean, awesome. Yeah, it's. I mean, when we've done trade shows, it's be it's generally been me and Mark because we're the most local to each other ned's uh -huh. come to a couple feeling kane uh we've had james waterworth as as well um sigabort lee he lives in france now so he deserted us so he doesn't come out unfortunately <laughs> but we generally have a full like arcade series set up with uh the launch pad minis and people just come over and it's like oh all right okay and oh colored lights and press buttons they, they do that for a minute and then they go so what is this stuff yeah <sighs> Have you used Ableton Live before? No. Yeah, brilliant. Right. 
and it, it just draws people in. It's yeah. just that experimental, generative stuff that's just so so really cool. To be fair, I love it. Yeah, it's a fun one. It's you can make things that sound like music really simply, and it, there's the familiar concept of the game. Yeah, um, I, I love it uh, for sometimes just when I don't know what I'm doing and I just want to start and uh, yeah, you know, start pressing a few buttons, seeing what I get. And, Definitely uh, off to the races. I've, I've got two favorites in that set. I, I, Polypin has been the most successful, but I love Asteroids immensely mm -hmm. uh and we gave that away for free last week uh that that offers over unfortunately it, when it's gone it's gone um but the euclidean mode that he made for uh ah typical i've actually put the control away the uh akai fire mm -hmm. is awesome um and i've just done a video because we he's done like push integration for it as well so everything's controlled from the the dials and it's dynamic in that you select a pattern and then the rest of the dials uh, are mapped to that pattern's variables. So you haven't got 27 banks of stuff to go through. Uh -huh. There's just two. It's really, uh, Max Alive has come on a long way and Live Banks is one of those things that I really, really enjoy playing with and making dynamic when you select something and a different set of controls appear. Yeah, fun. Love that. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the freebie. Maybe we'll just get that out to people. Yeah. They're, they're, you're doing some oh, yeah. cool stuff for people that are home. and Yeah. So um, obviously we, I, uh, UK based. Uh, and so coronavirus has been, we've been in lockdown at this point for, this is our th end of our third week. Mm. But in the collective, we're worldwide. So we've got uh, Maurizio Giri from Amazing Noises over in Italy. Uh, we've got Chris Vick down in Australia. So we've seen the waves and we've been talking about it for quite a bit of time. And I kind of thought that in the current mood of the world and given that we're all stuck at home and we're not going to be looking to spend a huge amount of money on music stuff etc um i thought the best thing at this time would be to speak to the guys in the collective and go hey is there something in your product lineup that you would be happy for us to give away for a week for free it took about five minutes on that post and four of the guys stood up and just went yeah absolutely um, JJ Bird came up with the inspiration to me in the first place with his Fat Mini. Uh, Mark Towers with his Asteroids. Uh, this week is Ned Rush's uh, Nobulator, which is just a huge amount of fun uh, of the kind of stutter edit type of thing with one knob. Yeah. Um, we've got stuff coming up from Perform Module. Um, amazing Noises are contributing. Uh, Alex Kidd's. I'm trying to remember everybody that's we, we've got eight weeks of giveaways and I hope by the end of eight weeks that certainly most of the world is, is looking at a different world outside their front door at yeah. that point. But we just thought that at this time releasing new products every Friday is just not the way to go. So every Wednesday we do a mailer out to the mailing list, which is about 50,000 people and you can have this product as long as you add it to your account this week, it's yours to keep forever. Yeah. And the feedback's been brilliant and it's been quite heartwarming uh, to do it. Even if, you know, I can't make a difference myself. I, I can't go out and uh, be a nurse or volunteer yeah. in that way. But if I can keep someone indoors at home right. for an hour entertained, you know that yeah. that's cool and a massive thanks to all of the collective that have supported that in in, in donating their products basically for free it's mm. been yeah yeah quite a moment for me that one yeah that is great to be a part of that and like, that's a big thing right now is like there's really nothing you can do um and what you can do is nothing, nothing. stay home stay is, home is the best thing but, just stay um, home. It's so, yeah. It is kind of challenging to just like be like, like, well, what am I doing? Like, like, yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, I work from home quite a lot of the time because I can 
do most of my day job electronically uh, anyway. But myself and my wife, we were working from home a week before the lockdown. So we're an extra week over. Um, yeah. And we go out in the car in pairs, but only one of us leaves the car to go into a shop. And it's, yeah. it's just very weird. It's like a mixture when we go out for a walk of Christmas Day and The Walking Dead. Christmas Day, when you go out for a walk, everyone says hello. Yeah. You don't know them. Complete strangers say hello and smile. Mm -hmm. But The Walking Dead, everyone crosses the road to say hello to you yes. from the other side of the road. Yeah. And it's, yeah, yeah. And you, you get suddenly really, really angry with people who don't cross the road or, or <laughs> can't stress the little things. Yeah. But it is what it is. Well, it is a, a tense situation for yeah. everybody. I was in the supermarket, uh, I don't know, a week or two ago. And uh, I noticed in my conversation with the clerk, I, I, I felt my stress all of a sudden, you know, like because I, I, I felt how awkward I was being and <laughs> how strange it was that here I am with a mask and gloves on, like trying to be friendly. Yeah. But, but I'm like, <laughs> and, and they have plastic, <laughs> uh, like, yes, like uh, clear plastic between. Yeah. Uh, like shields, yeah. like uh, almost like at an armed uh, bank. <laughs> yeah, we thing. knew it was serious when Bargain Booze put those up and only let us buy two bottles of wine at a time. It was like, but well, that's only going to get us through tonight. We, <laughs> we can't come back tomorrow. But yeah, uh, things have got better. I, I think people have stopped panic buying. And I sh the shops have been amazing that you go to where they're, they're enforcing the social distan mm -hmm. distancing and the staff there just brilliant. There are dickheads out there. I'm sure you have that in America, um, but just ignore them. Move on. Yeah. Don't let them ruin your day. Because yeah, you know, I think that's a small percentage. And and you know what? They might only be a dickhead in those few minutes you encounter them, and then oh, absolutely, you know, so yeah, it yeah. And it, you don't know what's going on there. Here, I mean, I, I've never really felt anxiety myself personally, but there are times at, at this stage that I'm like, yeah, I. And then I run inside and I, I put some music on. That's yeah. my escape. That's, that's where I'm going. Well, I don't put some music on. To be fair, what I probably do is I faff about with a load of cables and uh, three different <laughs> MIDI controllers. And uh, then about an hour later, when my, my wife comes in, Claire, and says, uh, so have you finished yet? I haven't started. I haven't started yet. I'm going to start in a minute. And then, I still uh, have figured out why this isn't working. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's there's no power in the USB yeah. hub. Oh my! Yeah, it's just wow. Yeah, I've got I've got my ultimate setup now, and um, I've managed. I think I've managed to figure it out. The one that I can do everything I want, but do it whilst drunk. That was always my my challenge because you, you can build something that's so complex and you know s different shifted layers of controls on controllers and stuff and then you you stand up and you put two records on and you've had a glass of wine and you go oh i can't remember any of this yeah I simple this. is best <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've get you can't see it just off camera. I've got the Akai Force, and it's my yeah. mission to learn how to use it to uh -huh. make music. At the moment, it's the best Ableton Live playback controller I've ever had with its mm. grid and the 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 touch screen. Um, uh, so yeah, you, it, I haven't had a chance to check that out. So you're oh, yeah. I know I mean, they, it, they just added the Ableton Live features because it's meant to be a standalone thing. If I'm not, it mistaken, is. Right? I mean, it's a 100 standalone with inbuilt synths. Uh, it sounds really good, and it's really it, it's brilliant in standalone. And actually, it's so good in standalone that the live integration at this moment in time is really just session view. Uh -huh. they're, they're all of the step sequencing and etc. In it doesn't work in live um you can have it as a remote like midi controller but then it's out of sequence with live because it's it it's a conundrum yeah, it's a conundrum okay. but i've got one and lee sigabor over in uh in france has got one so i'm hoping that we'll be able to do something with it to extend that usage yeah. Uh, within live, we've already done stuff with launch sync with it so that you can sync it up. And I've got a 
uh, Allen and Heath K2 uh, next to it. So I've got real faders as well for, you know, slamming in the mix. As, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's quite a lot of fun. And it, it, it's the middle at the moment of uh, the kind of back end of my decks, which are just down here. I'll try and do that without banging the mic, but they're hidden in this uh, mm. piece of lovely furniture that you normally see in the videos, the the big wooden desk thing. Yeah. The decks are inside that and then pull oh, out. Cool. So, yeah, that was, that was my Friday nights generally. Myself, my wife, the cat. Um, and that's just started to become myself, my wife, my cat, and uh, anyone on Facebook who wants to to join into the live stream. And I've been uh, challenging myself on working out how all of that stuff works as well. So, yeah, another distraction to stop me making music. It's just, yeah. Yeah, I think everyone's becoming a, a video editor, live streamer. Uh, there's in in the community of uh certified trainers everyone's like what are you doing how do you use obs what is this camera i need a switcher oh, yes you know, oh god um, yeah a switcher can you find a switcher anywhere nowhere all oh, sold no. out yeah all everywhere that stuff. yeah yeah I was it's ridiculous looking just uh not even that i was necessarily gonna buy anything but i was just kind of like you know, if I wanted to up my game, what would I need? And mm, how would I get do it, it anyway? Black Magic A10 Mini, I think three hundred dollars for HDMI inputs. It doesn't do preview and anything like that, but for that money, awesome. And they've just released a, a pro version, hmm. but I've still got my order in for the the first one because I, I am going to use it in the day job. I, I yeah. absolutely guarantee it because I I do training for systems mm -hmm. and actually to do this like we're, we're doing now to not just be a screencast of a screen with a voice behind it to right. be able to have that two-way communication i need to s switch between a few cameras mm -hmm. the overhead you know the straight head and, and and your screen as well so uh yeah. fingers crossed if this doesn't take too long you know there may be and i think this is what people are learning do we have to drive in our cars for two hours to go to a meeting for an hour to drive back yeah. for two hours? It's like, no. Well, I think we're going to see a, no. lot of, a lot of changes like that. We're realizing a lot of jobs can be done at home. A lot of meetings could have been emails and a lot of, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we'll see a lot of changes. Um, maybe some industries will catch up too. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I, I know one thing we got to realize is that uh, the health of one person, one group on one side of the country is important to all of us. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're all, yeah, we're, without we're, doubt. We're much more interconnected than I think we realize. And then yeah. it's starting to come into focus yeah. with this. Um, <sighs> but yeah, the, the, it's been cool to see, to see you on, uh, on uh, the internet there doing your live DJ sets. <laughs> going on yeah it looks like you're having a lot of fun and and the, the one last night i think we i've been trying to up the game and i've been watching I, i've been you, you know you learn from different industries so i've been watching the gamers and how they do yeah. live streams and etc and, and yeah. way yeah. way ahead and i first one was me just using one macbook trying to do ableton live and serato and the streaming using obs into facebook that didn't go well. Um, yeah. Now the the output from the mixer goes into a sound card into a second Mac, which then does OBS. Uh -huh. I didn't know the settings, and that one didn't go well. Uh, then I ported it across into Restream. So Restream then sends it out to Twitch and YouTube and Facebook, and no one watches on YouTube, and no one watches on Twitch, and everyone watches on Facebook, and they mm. keep taking me down it's like, what do you but, mean taking you down um e either copyright violation oh playing other people's music uh, i can understand it to a degree yeah. um i mainly play my tracks off bpm so either plus or minus and that seems to work but then they do just stop and you're like ah so i've yeah it's a bit of fun and last night was probably the most amount of fun because my wife actually got involved and started dancing behind the decks and uh -huh. looking at herself on the camera and going, yay, nice. having it. And it was great fun. It was really good. <laughs> and actually, you're connecting with your mates as well in the chat. 
Yeah. And I know every man and his dog is streaming live sets, etc. And there's some massive names out there. I know today the defected uh, festivals got David Penn. He's playing live on the keys. I was just watching that before. Hmm. Yeah, there's some amazing content online. And the fact that there's no clubs, I'm probably watching and listening to more club music than I have done in years. Because I can't remember the last time I actually went out. Yeah. It's been that long. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I hear you on that. Make the most of it. Yeah. You know, we won't get this again, I hope. Yeah, right. Yeah, there. It's uh, if you can, if you're healthy and, uh, you know, and you have that opportunity, it is... A very unique opportunity, for sure. Absolutely, mm. yeah, definitely. So, uh, the the giveaways—they just kind of started uh, like a week or two ago, two weeks, or how far along we're are on you week, into it? Week three, week? Uh, we're on. Uh, let, I'm, I'm going to open up Evernote. Evernote is my. <laughs> well, you, you know, you collect apps, yeah. and it's like, oh, some of them work, and some of them, you know. You look at six months later and go, oh, I've never used that. Yeah. Uh, oh, here we go. Different. Right. So <laughs> exclusive, what we've got coming up. We've got One Knob Wonders next week from Carl, uh, who's Perform Module. Yep. And uh, he's done some stuff with you, yeah. <laughs> quite a lot of stuff with you. Yeah. He was that the uh, is... last guest on the show, actually. Absolutely. If, if this comes like, out in oh, order, yeah. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> it's like, yeah, take care. Oh, yeah, he's... he's um, <laughs> He's intense um, when you talk to him about like like his mixing and because uh, we were getting into oh, it because he's got a freebie right now called uh, Sweetie Pies. And Sweetie they, Pies, and yeah. His like kind of like arsenal of like more like utility type effects, uh, which is really he, he's cool. The, he's the absolute master at the audio side of live. He's completely my go-to guy on that. He's the guy that, as you know, curates the Isotonic Sound store and the content that comes out of that. Um, he's also the guy that, that un, unlocked how to make an Ableton Live pack so that it installs in the library. Mm -hmm. um, and it, we, we basically, every one of the developers develops... And when they're ready, we send the manual, the the devices, etc., over to to Carl and go put that in a pack for us. Twenty four hours later, yep, self installing Ableton Live pack, yeah. brilliant. Yeah, he's he's awesome. So he's sponsoring, huh, sponsoring, donating next week's giveaway. We've then got uh, Javier, uh, who's Noise Coco. Uh, he's doing a product the week after. Tobias, uh, the Ableton drummer, who's mm -hmm. Ah, absolute yeah. legend and an amazingly, brilliantly lovely bloke. Uh, he gives so much, so, so much to, to the community as a whole. Uh, we've got a product from him. Then Alex Kidd's doing one. Then LDM Designs is doing one. And at the moment, we end with the Amazing Noises uh, mm. device. So, oh, yeah, cool. we've got yeah. lots coming out. And that's on my... Uh, work list of everything to do and uh i've got yeah. to pay my european vat that's next i've got to do a video for clip x pro bindings a video for the song mode oh have you seen song mode that's yeah, yeah that's awesome uh, another like crazy innovation you guys have come up with yeah that was uh crazy bald head or kb live solutions another ableton certified trainer mm. see uh, i find that you guys ha have that kind of because you've got the people coming to you, going, I don't know how to do this. How do you? The inspiration there is just awesome. And his idea on that, uh, the, the song mode of ch changing the way that we play in session view from individual clips or, or just scenes to a whole scene being a button and having, you know, 32 of them. Mm. So you could see your whole song mapped out and play with it. It was like, oh, that is awesome yeah. and the one that i'm filming at the moment because that works currently in session view is to have exactly the same thing but for a range view huh. so that every locator that you have in your live set is a button oh, on cool, cool. the push uh, the push to the launch pads you can color them as well so you can see where the break is etc and they all work with the global quantization so as you're playing through your arrangement you can set them from the controller uh, or you can just 
click and create them and that again it's just so simple that's gotta be great and for my, mixing too just like oh mixing you know, you're working on a oh, track yeah, and, yeah. yeah fiddle fiddle I play it again fiddle fiddle play it again because i'm always doing the, the mouse thing and yeah. then i get distracted over here and then, oh back to the mouse and but with that i'm just like set set the arrangement locator play yeah okay play it again yeah okay brilliant and even for play like playback engineers to have their because yeah. they generally work with arrangement view as the playhead passes the uh locator it changes on the controller as well so it will give you a visual representation oh, on you your are. midi controller of where you are nice. so yeah that's that's probably the next product to come out uh because uh, I mean, at this time we'll we'll release updates because people already have the products, and you know, giving something more to people at this time is part of the ethos of what we're trying to do. Um, but we're we're just not releasing anything new. <laughs> I've come on an interview with nothing to plug. This is stupid. <laughs> oh the, well, you, I mean, come on. There's so much. <laughs> you know, there's it's undoubtable that. Uh, is that a word? Undoubtable. That, Undoubtable. Uh, yeah. Anyone yeah. that uh, is familiar with your work has gone through all of it. Uh, I've gone through everything on Isotonics uh, Studios dot com. It's it. There's so much, and and it's like for all different kinds of workflows too. Um, yeah. Like uh, for me, like I'm not really DJing, so some of that stuff is not really of what I do. But some of the other stuff, like you know, probably maybe a DJ isn't doing like randomly generated music or something like that. No, or, no, absolutely. Or even the, um, and that, that video. That stuff was is... kind of the, the collective mentality for me. Yeah. Um, when the guys bring something to the group and say, I've got this idea for this, as long as no one else is doing it, or we haven't got something similar, then the group collectively at times goes, Oh, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And by the time I get it to play with it, I can feel the passion for it. Mm -hmm. And I, I have one simple rule. If I can't be passionate about it myself, it, it doesn't go in the store. Yeah. And there's been stuff that I've been sent in the past. That I'm just like, I just, I don't get it. I'm sure there's people out there that would and could, but I can't stand on a video and look into that lens and go, this is the most amazing thing. If I didn't believe that myself, yeah. you know, it's yeah. I probably missed out on a few that have become big elsewhere that's that's cool you know mm -hmm. great but uh, i'm very very happy with with well, the content yeah, that you want it to be kind of true to yourself um uh, i've felt the temptation like you know if, if i made like a lo-fi chill hop pack you know like three <laughs> you know yeah I, like i could probably cash in on this thing going on but it's like that's not what i'm doing and um no and uh and I think it's cool. It's nothing like that. It's just I really like to use the guiding light of um, I want something that I want, you know, that I would yes. like to use and, and something I'll enjoy working on or, or almost something I'd be working on anyway. Yeah, and, absolutely. And uh, yes, yeah, so, but I do get that temptation, you know, like, like, sure, like there are certain trends that happen in music. I did a dubstep pack once, like in the early days. <laughs> like I, you know, I wasn't making dubstep music. I was just trying to really, I was trying to learn the synthesis, honestly. Yeah. Um, oh that yeah. Was yeah. The goal. yeah. I'll believe you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well, yeah. there's a lot of like interesting synthesizer work, you know. From, like, <laughs> there is no. I'm I was only getting it. Rick. That was in early days of me learning like about um, how to use like LFOs and things like that. So yeah. it was a good vehicle, but um, the product was kind of like, you know, like this is not who I am. And I'm like, no. why, why would you buy this from me? <laughs> kind of thing. I, I, to be fair, I think I did one dubstep mix. I, I, I used to do this thing called Isotonic Studio Sessions where yeah. I had a podcast and stuff. And each one, it was spread out over so long. So the, the music genre between each one had completely changed. And there was a like an electro house one when it was all the <laughs> squidgy noise and stuff. I'm like, I listen, listen back to it. Cause I'm obviously sitting around at home and went, what was I thinking? 
and now I'm actually this is proper lockdown lockdown boredom. I'm going through my iTunes. I'm listening to every song from A down to Z, putting it into a playlist if I keep it and deleting it if I'm never going to play it. Right. I've got too many songs that I'll never play, never listen yeah. to again. And it's just, it's quite cathartic just going through the oh, whole yeah. of ABBA's back catalogue and just deleting it out because I'm <laughs> never going to play a wedding again. It's right. quite simple. Yeah. I'm doing a little bit of that purging myself with uh, just old sessions. Um, you know, by doing this podcast, it, it, it uh, eats up disk space real fast because, you know, gotcha. you do it an hour or whatever two audio files that long or couple yeah. gigs and then I make a video and I mean like it it doesn't take long five no, or ten episodes no, I'm like I gotta like start purging my hard drive here <laughs> yeah I've got I've got that clean my Mac thing and it pops up literally every day and says you need to launch it again I'm like okay but what are you gonna find today that oh nine gig oh okay but I've only just got a like an external hard drive and um, it's only a four terabyte one the max only one and i've had it a week and it's now got two and a half terabytes on it it's wow. amazing how much more is on the hard drive there because i've gone down into the basement and got the old mac um tower thing that i had and gone oh I probably got a music library on there that I haven't transferred. So the whole idea was to move stuff off to a separate hard drive and, you know, clear that headspace, move yeah. old stuff away. And uh, all that's happened is I, I've collected loads more stuff that I probably didn't need to go through. So yeah. be cathartic deleting, I think. But yeah. oh, the videos, videos just take up so much space, especially with you doing it in uh, like Premiere. And it's created versions of versions of it. You know, oh, okay. oh, suddenly I've got no space and I had 100 gig this morning. What's gone? Yeah. Scary. I know. Can you hear my son, by the way? I don't know. No, he, I think he's just one at FIFA because that's oh. all he's playing at oh, the yeah. moment. And <laughs> it's literally, yeah. That's the only way you can play yeah. soccer right now these days. So. <sighs> virtually yeah. i might be really mean as soon as this finishes unplug the internet and see if he comes outside that, uh, <laughs> he'll probably only come down to check the internet and then he'll go back up into his room <laughs> yeah there he is again yeah he must have put last minute winner <laughs> yeah. hey, good he's getting things done <laughs> well you yeah know, um, it's it's something i've i've come to learn from my experience teaching high school is that's a way a lot of them just hang out like they, yeah. they play the game and some of them don't even care about the no. game really. They're just there to chat and hang out and they, you know, die in Fortnite and they laugh. Who cares? But they're, <laughs> they're hanging out. The, the funny know. thing for me is that when I, I obviously knocking on door first and open and he's on the Xbox with his mates and there, there's, I think they've got a team of 11 of them that will play another 11. So it's like, it's really organized, wow. but he's then got his iPhone and he's FaceTiming like two or three other people as well. I'm like, <laughs> uh, yeah, just well, how many things can you have going on at the same time on my Wi-Fi? I <laughs> want the Wi-Fi. I want to stream rubbish music on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> That's the new way, you know, That's the yeah. new generation. Just, absolutely this is definitely reinforcing that that's uh yeah they they, they know more than we do that's that's yeah, the thing that's very true. <laughs> it's like, i i did actually i i thought he might be impressed because i had the uh the chat relay thing in restream so it was aggregating from youtube and uh twitch and facebook and putting it out as part of the broadcast i went george george look look and he went yeah so what <laughs> uh, uh, i have to work hard to impress him yeah bless With that stuff yeah I, I don't know yeah might be better off trying to figure something else out <laughs> <laughs> i think it took him a few days to work out that i wasn't actually working anymore because he he actually thinks that most of the time the music stuff is my actual job uh -huh. so you know, oh you have a job like, yes george <laughs> I, I go out to work and that's when i put a suit on like, oh. but he's he'd already gone by the time i'd answered that anyway bless him teenagers yeah as you'll know <laughs> oh i know i I, sh I strangely miss them right now <laughs> yeah you know you uh yeah it's a funny job and that sometimes it it takes you to your limits of uh patience and endurance but yeah. um 
you know, it, it's it's very refreshing. It's uh, I, I do miss it. Um, yeah, I bet. But uh, I'm trying to get as much done as I can musically. I've been having some fun with some unusual projects, actually. That yeah. I, I, I stuff I've never normally done. Um, so one of the uh, the casualties of the whole lockdown, um, my wife is um, into um, tabletop board gaming, like Dungeons and Dragons. So she's Dungeons got a Dragon store. Board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Magic wow. cards and yeah. uh, all that stuff. They have, they have a store, um, which is obviously closed now, and they're yeah. putting together a huge tabletop gaming expo for April 18th. Working on it like for the last nine months or so, and then right around the second week of March, they realized, yeah. you know, we're going to have to call this. Uh, so it's kind of devastating, but they decided to turn it into an online thing where they'll be streaming some games. Awesome. So they postponed the actual expo, but now yeah. for that weekend, they're doing some online stuff. And there's this need for music for like uh, opening scenes and uh, beautiful and uh, like, you know, show intros. And I've been tasked to do some of that stuff. Oh, that'd be awesome. And it's oh, me that's so cool. So far out of what I normally do. Yeah. Um, you know, and would you do stuff like that with your wife normally? Well, um, the music and wife not connect in that way. Well, no, not, not like playing music together or anything. No. Um, no. Um, though she is, uh, taking up piano during this break, <laughs> which is cool. Uh, she's dabbled oh, in that before. Let me add that to the list. Must yeah. learn to play piano. I know. I was like, <laughs> I should be doing this too. Um, <laughs> but I would get tasked a lot of for like the audio stuff that they run into. Yeah. Um, but now there's all this need for music. Like, uh, I, That's I really made cool. A, yeah, it's fun. Uh, it's it's again like something I've been really interested in. And if anyone's listening to the show recently, I keep coming back to the idea of like having a story and like a goal and a clear mission of what you're doing before you start making music because yeah. I'm a sucker for showing up and be like, let's see. Ooh, <laughs> you know? like, what's let's have no idea what we're doing. Me? Which is and... why I love the arcade series because it's like, ooh, <laughs> you know, um, I love that. <gasps> but having now like these like really specific things to do is a challenge. Um, yeah. They needed like, like opening ceremony music for like 15 seconds. And, and I figured like, we needed like epic heavy metal, like with like tribal stuff. And I'm like, I never knew oh, that wow. before. And, and she yeah. had a, a thing she needed, like she called it um, like 1950s housewife music. <laughs> I'm like, all right. Um, it's so, like, whose line is it anyway? How would you get inspiration for 1950s well, there was, housewife um, music? A podcast called Stuff Your Mother Should never told you stuff your mom never told you okay um and it starts out with like um it's kind of like it's a little bit big band a little bit jazz it's you've heard it before i i don't really yeah. know like um it's very 1950s like uh leave it to be very kind of like stuff and, and i had to make a little intro with it and it was a blast i i wound up on uh, Ableton site downloading like the woodwinds to get like a clarinet yeah. and, the, and like the jazz drums, but it's something oh, I've wicked. never done before. And, um, it, it forced me to, I had to learn some music theory just to understand like some of these weird chords they're going to. And, um, yeah, it's just, you know, having like a project like that, yeah, it, it really like challenges you and, and makes you go in different directions. I, I, I mean, we were supposed to be at Machina, Bristonica the other week, uh, Loop and yeah. Superboot. It, obviously, everything's yeah. cancelled. And I just love the way that people have gone, you know, just because we can't do it in real life, what can we do mm -hmm. to make it happen anyway? And I, I see Superbooth is uh, going to have a home edition. So oh, they're, they're, they're going to do a, a, a virtual um, version of it. And if you think Superbooth probably... People would love to go, but it, it's a physical thing and it's yeah. in Berlin and it's only over two or three days. Right. Having a virtual version of it, that that's going to be amazing. Mm. And I know Ableton's putting quite a lot of their, this content that they were going to do 
I believe that's going to be uh, coming out online as well. So I'm, there's probably so much that is going to happen just yeah. in a completely different manner. And that's great. The, the human spirit, it will always endure effectively. Yeah, and I, I didn't see that about Superbooth, but I know Ableton mentioned that they were going to put some stuff together for that weekend. And uh, there's been a few live streams that have happened over the last few weeks that I've been like, oh, I, you know, I'm setting my calendar for it. And like, <laughs> like, Don't talk to me about calendars. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. This phone is not connected to work anymore. So. <laughs> but it's been like cool to like have like these little things to look forward to. And um, yeah. I've been able to do a couple live streams. Um, I'm going to do one for uh, the New York City Ableton Group next week. And um, Wicked. It's, this is an event. They run it in Brooklyn, which, is, which takes a good... Well, it's usually at 6.30 in the evening, which is... You can sometimes get to Brooklyn in an hour from where I'm from, but not at 6 o'clock. <laughs> it no. It take you the no, half I get you. the day. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I haven't bridge. gone no. in so long to one of these meetups and now I'm going to get to present at one of them. And it's just so nice Excellent. to be able to be right in my home, you know, and just walk down in my is socks. That, is that Josh's <laughs> group as well? Uh, Josh Weatherspoon. No, he's Hollywood. No, he, yeah, he's LA. I forget. Um, yeah. But that's near you though, isn't it? It's only, it's only <laughs> like that on the map. Well, it's, it's probably about... Uh, I went to um, to the UK. We landed in London uh, for our yeah. honeymoon, and uh, it's it's. A Don't you love your wife? You took her to London for your honeymoon. <laughs> well, we, that was where we started. <laughs> ah. We left. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> no, it was yeah. cool. We'd never been there. We spent a couple Commit days here, a couple like... days there, a couple days. You know, awesome. we, we saw a lot of Europe. Um, but it wasn't that much longer than it's maybe another two hours from California. I think it was oh, like wow. a seven hour flight, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. You know, and California is about four or five. I think one way it's a little quicker than the other way. You yeah. Know, I guess you catch a tail. That's end. the other end of the country for us. <laughs> yeah. Miles away. But we're only yeah. tiny. Yeah, yeah. And uh it was uh it it it's just cool though, you know, to be able to like do something like that and um I don't know what it's gonna be like when we're when people expect us to be places again. It's the thought yeah. of like, well, you mean I have to go 10 minutes from my house? <laughs> yeah, that that's going to be some weird conversations because it, 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 it really has made you think what me getting in a car and driving, it's like, yeah, that's risky. I mean, but life's risky anyway, but when yeah. you're doing that for hour upon hour and you don't need to, there, there seems to be limited points. Yeah. Uh, I think it, the one blessing I think is we'll come out of this a completely different world with hopefully different priorities and, mm. and hopefully appreciate what we've got more than before we went into it. You know, yeah. the, the ability to go to the shops when we want and just walk straight in and buy what we want yeah. it has been taken away. And that's just, wow. I, mean, I live across from uh, the cemetery where my, mummies and uh i can't even go over and visit her there because the cemetery is now closed really because people were gathering in the cemetery oh, of wow. all places it's mm. like brilliant well done thank you very much yeah wow yeah that's it's strange some of the changes and what that all means for us at this mm. point um i have a well, I, was, I just had a there's a family of bald eagles that live across the way from me and uh i wow. just saw them fly by my window <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that's something that never gets old for me uh no that wouldn't know. get old for me either i've got a cat that's that's about yeah. the extent of it uh, i did I, see a badger the, the other day though, that outside. was that was quite exciting <laughs> badger <laughs> huh? i've never seen one of them that's cool <laughs> No, but uh, like nature is is definitely still cool, and <laughs> thank God yeah. we can get out there. You know, uh, at this point, yes. you know, where I am, I guess, you know, it's it's suburban, so it's not like the city streets or anything. So you can still go out and get some fresh yeah. air. Just we we're, we're allowed the the hours exercise and uh, 
I don't exercise. So to have an hour's exercise enforced upon me by my wife every single day, I'm like, oh, really? I wouldn't yeah. do this normally, but we've got to get out. Yeah. So we do. We literally go and walk, walk the streets, crossing the road from other people, and then end up back at home. And it's, uh, yeah, I'm starting to enjoy it. And it's also away from the internet and away from phones yeah. and away from everything else. And it's just us two walking and talking and, you know, catching up on the day that, you know, how's your day been? Same as yours. We've been with each other for 24 hours. <laughs> Separate rooms at times worked brilliantly. But uh, my office is now here. Claire's is in the kitchen. Wow. And there's not a joke in that. She just has her, her office set up in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I think uh, it's interesting to find that even though my wife and I, are, it's just us and our dogs, um, even though we're in the same place, sometimes our experience is very different, um, yeah. especially when we go into our little meetings that we have online and our calls, um, you know, that can obviously change your mental state pretty quick but it's it's, yeah. it's been good to just check in with each other like so how you doing you know you feeling all right you know what what's going on um, yeah because yeah my my wife's a worry wart so we'll overanalyze everything to the point where it's yeah the end of the world and then none of that matters just yeah. chill calm relax what we got what we got what we got what you got everything's good yeah blessings mm-hmm yeah. So are you going uh, live tonight doing some DJing? I think I will do. I've got yeah? everything plugged in from last night, so why not? Well, I guess uh, this won't reach people in time for that, but you, you're going pretty regular, right? It's, I've seen you on yeah, a I lot, think, it feels like. I think every Friday or Thursday or, you know, seem early evening-ish, uh-huh. ish, maybe afternoon. I don't know. It, I don't want it to become a... I must do this by then. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. And whilst whilst Claire gets involved and enjoys it as well, then it will continue. Right. Um, Yeah. So, yeah. To be fair, I love it. It's great. um, Is that, that's mostly on Facebook and you say? Yes. I I just, I do it through my personal profile to be fair. I have been trying to set. Yes, please. (laughs) And I'm pouring it. Oh, (laughs) my first one since you've been in there there you go yeah i do it on my personal profile because it it, generally speaking it's not for isotonic it's uh, me and my friends um but i've tried to share it on i've got a twitch channel now and tried to share it on youtube but that the youtube didn't work last night the twitch did but no one logged into it i think i had an average of 0.35 viewers which is (laughs) great but yeah. yeah, I it's just a great deal of fun. And if you know any DJs are at home and they've got the equipment like a, a webcam, uh, an audio out, a sound card, do it. Hmm. You know, there, yeah. there's a lot of people saying, "Oh, don't do it." <sighs> Have fun. You know, the one thing I like about the live video thing is it, and this is something I've been enjoying about music lately too. Is um, it once it happens, it's like kind of gone, you know, poof, yeah. it went off. And so much music these days, like most of the time when I'm doing music, I'm at a computer now or, and it, and the record button is almost always going. And it's like, yeah. it makes you think about product and what am I doing and finishing. And I've been enjoying just music for music's sake. Let it happen. Play my guitar. Yeah. Poof. It's gone as, as a sound decays mm. so does the whole thing and it's it's just nice Off it's a like good, a like, wave yeah it's a good like being present in the moment exercise and i think that's something that on some level i've lost as i've gotten older and i've gotten more into okay. recording and more into um trying to it, end result product end result, something right. you've got yeah. to have something out of it rather than just the enjoyment of that moment yeah yeah yeah, I mean, I, I've been deleting my Facebook streams afterwards because I don't want those moments to live forever. But they've uh-huh. been fun watching them back in the morning and then going, no, Darren, no. <laughs> you need to turn the mic on to sit, talk. I've been really good at going, rah, 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 rah. and you, go, you are muted. And I, uh-huh. uh, switch. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, well, if you're there, you're in the moment, you get to see it. And if not, then, you know, 
Never happened. Oh, good. Like the good old days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you can remember it, I think the phrase is, you wasn't there. That's the one. <laughs> nice. <laughs> cool, man. Um, it's been good talking to you. and uh, Definitely. We'll been have, well overdue. Yeah, for sure. We'll send people to isotonicstudios.com, the hub of everything. Mm -hmm. The free stuff coming out each week. We're on the Nobulator. Definitely. If... What is today? Today's Friday, the something of April Nobulator 10th. Finish, yeah, Nobulator ends on the 15th. Yeah, so midnight on the 15th. I believe this will go up this weekend. This episode will wow. go up this weekend. Um, awesome. So people should still be able to get that and um, keep an eye out for all the stuff coming. Awesome. And, nice uh, one, bro. I uh, I must have missed uh, the memo on that. Um, I think you said it was on the Facebook page, um, announcing like you're going to do the giveaways. If uh, yes, I, if eight weeks from now we're still involved, um, let me know and I'll contribute something to that too. Because thank I think you so much. Uh, That'd be awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, I, I just didn't see the. I I don't hover around on Facebook too much. I spent too long on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's to your credit. Put it that way. <laughs> oh, well, I'm other places, but uh, for whatever reason, uh, the big turnoff for me for Facebook is every time I go on there, I have messages on my profile like, "Are you willing to do ads on your page?" Are you? And I'm just, oh. I feel like I'm just dealing with spam most of the time. Yeah. So I've kind of like I just let I, it go. <laughs> I, I've done ads. I've done the Facebook ads. I've done the Google ads. Um, Facebook ads seem to work better. Yeah. But it, it's the rule of diminishing returns. Uh, you get a spike and then you invest more money and that spike doesn't continue. And then you have to keep paying the same sort of money and then it plateaus out and then it, it starts to and you keep chucking money at it. Yeah. It doesn't get any better. So well, well, I've taken I do a break. I think those are okay, but I'm talking more about like random profiles and I'm pretty sure some sort of bot oh, asking me if they yes. can take over my page. Oh really? They'll pay me wow. whatever money, and they'll post on my page. Um, mm. And it's just like, yeah, that sounds dodgy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no thanks. No. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I guess the robots gotta make a living too, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so amazingly advanced, aren't they? It's just ridiculous. Yeah. I, I, my spam filter is, is quite good, but I. I must get to the isotonic email address like 200 a day. It's just like, oh, wow. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah Every now and again, I, I think, have I missed something? Well, if I've missed something because it's gone in spam and it was important, that person would get in touch. Delete all. Gone. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of have to just, for your own sanity, I think, just yeah. be okay with it. Hey, you Definitely. didn't know anyway. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> awesome. All right, Derek. I, I'm hearing the cat cry because I think the cat's been locked in the basement. <laughs> yeah, you better let him out. Um, yeah. yeah, so thanks a lot. And um, we'll end this with everybody and we'll just wrap it up real quick. But uh, head over to awesome. Isotonic Studios, everybody. Lots of cool stuff, lots of free stuff. Uh, Again, if I could recommend anything, I'd say Arcade Series or the World Series. Um, Clipex uh, Pro. World Collection, I'm sorry. Um, That's the one. Yeah, I mean, there's there's so much cool stuff. There's stuff for everybody. So check it out, isotonicstudios.com, and have a good day. See ya. <laughs>